Recently, scientists have made fascinating discoveries of hidden corridors and puzzling chambers within the Sphinx. These findings are giant, unusual, and some of them even scary, defying our previous understanding of the intelligence of the ancient Egyptians. Each of these discoveries about the Sphinx reveals the remarkable brilliance of the civilization responsible for its construction. So, the Great Sphinx of Giza is an enormous statue made of limestone, portraying a reclining Sphinx. It is situated in Giza, Egypt, and is believed to have been created during the time when King Khafre ruled, roughly between 2575 and 2465 BC. The sculpture specifically represents the face of King Khafre. Renowned worldwide, the Great Sphinx is a prominent symbol of Egypt and stands as a remarkable representation of Sphinx art. The period between approximately 2575 and 2465 BC stands as a remarkable chapter in human history, encapsulating the lives of ancient Egyptians. Delving into the daily lives of the people who lived during this time, we uncover a civilization rich in culture, sophistication, and a deep reverence for the afterlife. It is important to note that the Great Sphinx stands out as one of the most massive sculptures ever created, boasting impressive dimensions of approximately 73 meters in length and 20 meters in height. Its unique composition consists of a lion's body, complemented by a human head crowned with a regal headdress. Carved meticulously from a solitary block of limestone, evidence of pigment suggests that the entire statue was once painted. It is believed that around 100 workers, armed with stone hammers and copper chisels, dedicated about three years of labor to complete this extraordinary masterpiece. The true original name of the Great Sphinx remains a mystery to this day. The term Sphinx itself, which refers to a mythical creature with the body of a lion and the head of a human in ancient Greek mythology, likely emerged approximately 2,000 years after the statue was built. Despite the presence of numerous tombs in Giza, adorned with hieroglyphic writings dating back around 4,500 years, not a single one makes any mention of the statue. Similarly, the exact symbolism of the statue remains unclear. However, inscriptions from that era allude to a deity known as Ruti, a double lion god who stood guard at the entrance to the underworld and protected the horizon where the sun both rose and set. The Egyptians didn't write history, says James Allen, an Egyptologist at Brown University, so we have no solid evidence for what its builders thought the Sphinx was, certainly something divine presumably the image of a king, but beyond that, it is anyone's guess. The face of the Great Sphinx, while relatively better preserved compared to the rest of the statue, has suffered significant damage over the centuries due to weathering and acts of vandalism. In 1402, an Arab historian documented an incident where a Sufi zealot disfigured the face in an attempt to rectify perceived religious errors. However, despite these challenges, there are indications that provide insights into the original appearance of the face. Excavations conducted in the early 19th century unearthed fragments of the intricately carved stone beard and a royal cobra emblem from the headdress. Additionally, remnants of red pigments can be seen on the face, suggesting that the entire visage of the Sphinx was once painted in this hue. The presence of traces of blue and yellow paint in other areas has led Mark Lerner, an American archaeologist, to speculate that the Sphinx may have been adorned with vibrant, vivid colors reminiscent of those found in comic books. The construction techniques, purpose and architectural styles of the Sphinx and modern famous buildings vary significantly. The Sphinx was carved from limestone using ancient Egyptian quarrying and sculpting techniques, while modern buildings employ advanced methods such as reinforced concrete and steel frameworks. The purpose of the Sphinx was likely symbolic, representing the pharaoh's divine status or guarding the pyramids, whereas modern buildings serve various functions like residential, commercial or cultural purposes. Architecturally, the Sphinx reflects ancient Egyptian style with its monumental stone structure and blending of human and animal elements, while modern buildings showcase a wide range of styles influenced by cultural, functional, and technological considerations, resulting in diverse designs such as Gothic cathedrals, Art Deco skyscrapers, or minimalist museums. The Sphinx stretches approximately 73 meters in length and stands about 20 meters tall. Compared to the famous modern buildings, for example, the Statue of Liberty surpasses the Sphinx in terms of overall height. However, the Sphinx's elongated length and massive form contribute to its grandeur and make it an impressive architectural marvel in its own right. The exact purpose of the Sphinx, according to Khafre, or his kingdom remains a topic of debate. However, Mark Lerner, drawing on his research at the Sphinx Temple, has put forth his own theories. 
Today, remnants of the temple walls can be seen in front of the Sphinx, creating a courtyard surrounded by 24 pillars. The temple's layout follows an east-west axis, clearly defined by a pair of small niches or sanctuaries, each roughly the size of a closet. Swiss archaeologist Herbert Rick, who extensively studied the temple in the late 1960s, proposed that this axis symbolized the movements of the sun. An east-west line aligns with the point where the sun rises and sets twice a year during the equinoxes, which occur midway between midsummer and midwinter. Rick further suggested that each pillar represented an hour in the sun's daily journey across the sky. Lerner made an even more remarkable discovery. If one stands in the eastern niche during the sunset of either the March or September equinoxes, a captivating astronomical event unfolds. The sun seemingly descends into the shoulder of the Sphinx and continues beyond, disappearing into the southern side of Khafre's pyramid on the horizon. This mesmerizing alignment is a simultaneous occurrence where the shadow cast by the Sphinx and the shadow of the pyramid, both representing the king, merge into unified silhouettes. Lerner suggests that the Sphinx itself served as a symbol of the pharaoh, presenting offerings to the sun god within the temple courtyard. Former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs of Egypt, Zaha Hawass, agrees and adds that the Sphinx embodies Khafre as Horus, the revered falcon god in Egyptian culture, who, with his two paws, presents offerings to his father Khufu, who is personified as the sun god Ra, rising and setting within the temple's domain. Equally fascinating, Lerner made another intriguing observation. During the summer solstice, when positioned near the Sphinx, the sun appears to set precisely between the silhouettes of the pyramids of Khafre and Khufu. This striking scene bears a resemblance to the hieroglyph Akhet, which signifies the horizon, but also symbolizes the circle of life and rebirth. Lerner expressed his thoughts on this phenomenon in the Archive of Oriental Research, stating, Even if it is a coincidence, it is difficult to imagine that the Egyptians did not perceive this ideogram. He further pondered the possibility that this alignment was intentionally crafted, presenting an exceptional example of architectural illusionism on an awe-inspiring scale perhaps even the most grandiose of its kind. However, it appears that Khafre's original vision for the Sphinx was left incomplete. There are indications that suggest the statue was never fully finished. In 1978, during an exploration of the quarry near the Sphinx, Hawass and Lerner stumbled upon three stone blocks that had been abandoned. These blocks were likely left behind by laborers who had intended to use them for constructing the Sphinx temple. Additionally, segments of the bedrock along the north edge of the Sphinx's surrounding ditch show signs of partial quarrying. During their excavations, the archaeologists also discovered remnants of a workman's lunch and toolkit, including fragments of a jar for beer or water and stone hammers. It seems that, for some reason, the workers abruptly ceased their work and left the site unfinished. The Great Sphinx was carved out of a limestone bedrock. Considering the size of the statue and the amount of limestone required, we can assume a significant cost in terms of quarrying, transporting, and shaping the stones. Also, the construction of the Great Sphinx involved a substantial amount of manual labor. Skilled craftsmen, overseers, and workers were likely employed for an extended period. Estimating the cost of ancient labor in today's terms is complex, as wages, living conditions, and societal structures were vastly different. So, considering all of these factors, it is safe to say that calculating with current alternative finances the construction of the Sphinx cost Egyptians tens of millions of dollars, for sure. Moreover, according to experts, we have been informed that the pyramids were constructed as tombs for the pharaohs. However, it's intriguing that no evidence of a pharaoh's burial has ever been discovered inside these pyramids. Upon conducting some quick research, experts in the field discovered that pharaohs of Egypt were actually laid to rest at the Valley of the Kings, which is situated nearby. This raises the question, why is an inaccurate account being taught in schools? Over the past few years, numerous tunnels and shafts have been unearthed, both in the vicinity of the Great Pyramid of Giza and even within the Sphinx itself. These remarkable discoveries have shed new light on the complex and intricate structures surrounding these iconic ancient monuments. There is a well-known hidden chamber in the Great Sphinx called Pairing's Hole. This opening is located approximately four feet behind the Sphinx's head and was constructed in 1840 by Howard Weiss. It was named after the man who designed it. Wies believed that by creating this hole, he could gain access to secret chambers inside the Great Sphinx. Originally intended to be 27 feet deep, the drilling rod became stuck during the process. Wies attempted to dislodge it by using gunpowder, but eventually abandoned the idea to avoid causing further damage. 
to the monolithic structure. In 1978, Dr. Zaha Hawass investigated the hole created by Wies and ventured inside. To everyone's surprise, he made a captivating discovery, an artifact from the Great Sphinx's headdress. This unexpected find added to the intrigue surrounding the ancient monument. One of these fascinating shafts is the eastern shaft, situated within the paws of the Sphinx. Upon closer examination, it becomes evident that this is no ordinary passageway. Instead, it reveals itself to be a rectangular pit covered by a cement roof and sealed off by a trapdoor made of iron. This intriguing setup was the work of French Egyptologist Emil Barres during his restoration efforts in the 1920s. Barres' intention was clear – to protect and preserve the Great Sphinx for future generations. Moving on to Shaft A, we find ourselves on top of the Sphinx's head. This deep hole, paved with cement, measures approximately 5 feet square and has a depth of nearly 6 feet. An iron trap door secures its entrance. The purpose behind the creation of this shaft has sparked much speculation. Some believe it was initially designed to secure an Egyptian headdress, similar to practices in the New Kingdom. However, its subsequent deepening suggests a quest for hidden chambers concealed within the monolithic structure. Lastly, we delve into Shaft D, referred to as such by Dr. Hawass and Egyptologist Mark Lerner. Positioned in the northwest hind of the Sphinx, this passage had been previously identified by a young boy named Mohammed Abdul Anu Fayad in 1926. Dr. Hawass and his team further explored this shaft during their expedition in 1980. Descending deep into the earth, it reaches the water table below the Sphinx. However, its trajectory ends abruptly, approximately 4.5 meters below the floor level. The lower portion of Shaft D yielded intriguing finds, suggesting more recent human activity. Among the discoveries were modern items like glass, tin, foil, and cement. The irregular shape and crude cuts of the passageways, coupled with the presence of footholds on the walls, indicate that Shaft D served primarily as an exploratory route rather than a functional passage. Unveiling the secrets of the Great Sphinx's shafts has been a journey filled with awe and wonder. Each discovery has brought us closer to unraveling the enigmatic story woven within its timeless stone, said Dr. Zaha Hawass. It's interesting to point out that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has praised the architectural achievements of the ancient Egyptians, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza. Musk described the pyramid as an incredible structure and speculated about the advanced techniques and tools employed in its construction. Musk said that ancient Egyptian buildings are very mysterious and maybe they were built by aliens. Musk's tweets sparked conversations and garnered attention, ultimately leading to an invitation from Egypt's Minister of International Cooperation to visit the country and explore its historical sites. It's worth noting that this invitation was extended to Musk as a result of his public admiration for ancient Egypt. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification.